Hey everyone, this is Manoj and uh, I'm Swati. Yeah, we are from the Azure Machine Learning team. Um, you must have noticed the references to the foundation model catalog uh, in the keynotes. So we are here to dive deeper uh, into this. Uh, this is the Azure Machine Learning Studio homepage. Uh, Azure Machine Learning is a end-to-end -end platform for uh, you know, prepping data, training models, and uh, deploying models. Uh, so this is the homepage. And uh, you can explore the model catalog uh, by landing uh, in the model catalog hub. Um, we have models from different collections here, uh, starting with the OpenAI uh, models. Uh, this model catalog will be covered in depth in the build your company own, uh, build your own co-pilot session. Um, and then like we have the uh, Hugging Face Hub collection. Uh, we have partnered with Hugging Face to bring uh, thousands of OSS models, transformers models from there into the product. And then in today's uh, session, we'll be focusing on the models that the Azure Machine Learning team is curating for you. These are OSS models. Um, uh, we are starting with a bunch of transformers models uh, and speech models. The idea here is that these models, you can like uh, do the end-to-end -end flow of uh, evaluation, fine-tuning, and deployment. Uh, let's look at one of the models here. Um, I'm opening the model card for this uh, audio model, which is Whisper. Uh, I can take a look at the model card, go to the original model card. This one came from Hugging Face Hub, so you'll go there. Uh, and then I have a uh, playground where I can try out this model. So let's see. Uh, welcome to Microsoft Build. And there you go. So I can come back, explore um, a few more models here. Like this one uh, is Dolly. We added this recently. So you can say it's a text gen model. So we can try out some sample inference here and kind of get the results. Uh, we are launching this uh, uh, in preview, so we'll continue to add uh, a lot more models uh, uh, you know, in the next coming weeks. Uh, but the idea is that once you are here, you can like either deploy these models directly for inference, uh, you can fine tune these models with your own data, uh, or you know, you're not sure about which model to start with, uh, you can like evaluate uh, models before deciding to fine tune. Uh, Swati will now show an end-to-end -end demo of uh, emotion detection with one of these models. Thanks, Manoj. All right. So this is the model catalog that Manoj just showed us. And uh, this is where you get started in Azure Machine Learning to start using uh, foundation models, right? For the purpose of this demo, let's go with a simple case where I'm looking to develop an app for detecting people's moods based on their social media posts. So I basically want to look at short pieces of text and classify the emotion that I can extract out of it. In order to do that, I'm going to need a text classification model. So I come in here into the Azure Machine Learning Model Catalog, and I see these open source models that Azure, Azure ML has curated. And in here, I can come in and filter for text classification models, which is great because I find this model, Distilbert, which basically gives me a sentiment from pieces of text, right? I can give it different samples, and we can see that it's pretty good at telling me whether, whether that piece of text was positive or negative. Great starting point, but for my use case, where I really want to find out people's moods based on their, on their social media posts, I'm, I'm looking for something a little more nuanced than that. I want to identify like what kind of emotion are they expressing from their posts. Are they expressing anger, joy, love, happiness, sadness? You know, I, I want to get into those details. So it's evident that I'm going to need to fine tune my model for my own case. Um, this particular model, of course, was giving me just two classes. And in order to fine tune, I'm going to move on here and find a more generic large language model, something like BirdPay's Uncased, which is uh, an open source third party large language model that's available for fine tuning. The model itself can be used for fill mask, which is predicting blank pieces in the middle of text. But the beauty of this model is that it can be fine-tuned for several different tasks. You can see here from these uh, different fine-tuning tags that you can use it for text classification, token classification, question answering, and so on. And so I'm going to go ahead and walk you guys through how I can fine-tune this as an end user. I launched the fine-tune wizard here, and I'm going to show you guys some advanced settings. Um, so once I give it my job and experiment name, 
the first thing I need to do is figure out what task am I fine tuning this model for. Like I mentioned before, I want to classify uh, pieces of text and identify what emotion they express. So I'm going to build a text classification model. And then I obviously need to bring in my training data. And this is my own data for the purpose of my uh, use case. Out here, I have a labeled data set, which has 16,000 tweets that have been pre-labeled. And I have classified these as belonging to six different emotion categories, right? Like anger, sadness, uh, joy, love, fear, and surprise. Uh, and because I've already uploaded this data set, I'm simply pointing to it in my fine tuning. Let's give it a minute here. Um, we can get a preview of this, of this data set, see what it looks like. And I need to tell my model which uh, columns in the data set to use for fine tuning. Once again, the text column here contains the actual text of my posts. I'm sorry, I put the wrong one. It's the text. And the label here is the label string because I want the string describing the actual emotion. And I give it this fine tuning uh, data. One thing I want to call out here is whenever I provide my own fine tuning data, this fine tuning is happening in the context of my workspace. And this data, which is private to me, is never leaving my workspace. So it's not like any other competitor or anybody who should not be viewing this gets access to this data. Both the data and the model, the fine-tuned model, they continue being my model and my data in my workspace. Um, and then when I, when I go on with the rest of fine-tuning, I have the ability to pass in my own validation data or test data as well. But I can also leave those you know, at their default value, and the system will keep an automatic split for these purposes. This screen is where I wanted to highlight some advanced settings. Again, all of these have default values, so you don't need to pass in, you know, you don't need to configure them if you don't want to, but if you, if you wanted more fine-grained control, you can control things like your batch size, learning rate, uh, you can also enable certain optimizations like ORT, deep speed, and LoRa. And what these optimizations would do for you is run the fine-tuning at a much faster pace, or enable you to run this on, uh, you know, with, with fewer compute and memory requirements. For now, because I'm getting started, I'm just gonna leave all of these settings as is. And then I give it my GPU compute because I need to run this fine tuning on some compute target. And I can, I can review all of my fine tuning settings and submit this job. It does take a little while for fine tuning to complete. So for the purpose of this demo, I actually submitted a job that we can look at. Uh, I did want to also call out that for those of you who prefer code-based approaches, the same fine-tuning wizard that I showed through UI can be accessed via code. And the model cards that we have, like in any of these model cards, you will see, um, the, uh, let's go back to that one. Uh, in, in any of the model cards, we can find um, sam links to samples out here, which show you how you can access uh, code for doing, doing the same fine-tuning via Python SDK or via CLI if you so prefer. And right here, I have cloned one of those sample notebooks uh, where I'm actually running the end-to-end -end fine tuning via Python SDK. I'll skip through this really quick, but show you the main meaty cell here that's of interest right here. Oops. This is the piece where you perform your fine tuning. And you can see that a single pipeline component, the text classification pipeline, encapsulates everything that you need to get your fine tuning done. As a user, you just need to call this one component, and behind the scenes, it takes care of all the data pre-processing, the actual fine tuning, computing of the evaluation metrics, and you know, the end-to-end -end, uh, pipeline for fine tuning is handled in that component. And right here is where I can pass in and you know, customize any of the parameters I need, things like learning rate and so on. Um, all the parameters we saw on the advanced screen they can be configured here. One of the cool things of using the code-based approach is that if you have a custom workflow where you need any pre-processing steps or post-processing steps, you can build your own custom pipelines where you call those components, your own components, before you call this fine-tuning component or after that, and submit this entire end-to-end uh, -end pipeline to run in an automated fashion. The rest of this notebook goes over how you can access the completed run and review metrics and all that good stuff. But what I'll do is I'll switch over to that completed job uh, in the UI and we can take a look at metrics out there. 
So this was a job I had submitted a little earlier, where I started with bird pays uncased as my base model, and I provided my 16,000 labeled, uh, labeled tweets to detect emotion out of that. And if I look at this model in detail, you can see the graph in here, which tells you all the different steps that were taking place for you behind the scenes, right? Um, also, if I wanted to compare, if, if I wanted to compare different runs and see how they did, like starting out with, say, different base models and fine-tuning them with the same data, um, I, I've basically run an experiment beforehand where I started with three different base models, trying to see which one was best for my use case. And using all of the experimentation and tracking capabilities in Azure Machine Learning, I can uh, visually infer which of those base models worked best for me, right? Because I could see which metrics mattered for my case and decide uh, to pick one of these. So all of this evaluation is inbuilt for you within the fine tuning pipelines. For this demo, let's move back to our uh, bird base model that we had fine tuned. Let's take a look at the metrics real quick to make sure it did well. And you can see here that the model we trained had a pretty decent accuracy. You can see things like the AUC score, the F1 score. Uh, as you scroll down, we can see things like the precision recall table, the confusion matrix, which tells me how it did on the six different classes of data that I was trying to uh, label this, this uh, model on. And basically, all of the other metrics for fine tuning are available for me. Since the model looks pretty good at 91% accuracy, I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and register this model and use it. And so I can do that again from, this, uh, from, from my fine tuning run itself. I can go ahead and register the model and it automatically, uh, you know, it'll find the model for me and I can give it whatever model name. My model, go ahead and register that model. And I have actually pre-registered the model as well before. Right here, this was my demo model. And once I have the model registered in my workspace, I can very easily deploy it to an endpoint for inferencing. So in this case, I'm gonna be deploying it to a real-time endpoint uh, that I can use for online inferencing. I won't actually go ahead and set that up because it takes a few minutes to set up the endpoint, but I have actually uh, set this up already for us. And here's the endpoint which I had pre-deployed. In this endpoint, I'm gonna give it some of my sample data, which has a bunch of tweets and social media posts, and I'm gonna see how my fine-tuned model did. And right there, you can see we started with a model that was a generic birth-based model, and we fine-tuned it so that it can classify my text into, uh, you know, into six different labels, telling me exactly what emotion each of those expressed. As an app developer, I want to highlight how easy it was for me to do this. I really did not need any expertise around machine learning, or I did not need to know the details of how these text classification models work. All I needed was bring in my own data and identify what I want to do with it. And Azure Machine Learning made it really possible for me to easily get started and come up with a fine-tuned model. Once I have this model, I can use all of Azure Machine Learning capabilities to operationalize it at scale. And basically use it in my scenario end to end. So with that, that brings us to the end of our demo. Yeah, I want to talk about import. Yeah, I yeah, did I want to talk about import. Thank <laughs> you, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, so let's go back to the model catalog for a minute. One of the things I wanted to call out is, you saw these different collections and you know the different collections of models you have access to as a user. The pace of AI has been, you know, and the advancements in AI has been so rapid in recent months that it's really, really hard for any one person or company to keep, you know, keep up with that pace. We often have people asking us, how do we get the latest, greatest models in? I wanted to point out that we have this button here called import, which basically allows you to import any open source model from Hugging Face. That, um, that meets certain criteria, like it, it needs to match the tasks we support and we, we've documented all of these um, uh, requirements. But as long as you have a model that meets these criteria, it's really easy to bring in the latest and greatest into Azure Machine Learning and start using it right away within a matter of minutes. So you know, regardless of, regardless of how large a company you are or how much technical expertise you have on your end, it's really easy to use this platform and bring in the latest open source models and start using them right away. With that, I think we're, we're really at, 
uh, a point of time where we are demo democratizing AI and making it available for everybody. So we can't wait to see what you guys build with this. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, folks.